Hello guys, good evening. Uh, I'm sorry for this long delay, uh, but I, I was having some issues with my internet, so that's the reason why I couldn't connect on time. But we are already here, so thank you so much for the ones that are always on time. So good evening to everyone. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. So, uh, well, as usual, guys, I would like to know if you can listen to me clear. So is it clear? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, everybody. teacher. Okay. Uh, well, today, as usual, guys, we are going to start by asking you, you know, to have a brief review before we start today's class. Uh, as I always ask you like some questions or we have some practice about the previous topic we saw before we go to the main one. So today we're going to try to have, uh, let me see, it's going to be an exercise actually about countable and non-countable nouns. This is what we did yesterday. What do you guys remember about countable nouns? Can someone tell me what is that? In simple words, what is a countable noun? Can someone say anything? What is a countable noun in simple words? What is that? Countable, these are our words which can be counted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, that's pretty obvious. Things that we can count or things that can be counted. Now, can someone tell me a little bit about uncountable nouns? How do I identify uncountable nouns? How do I do that? Oh. Repeat the question, teacher. How do I identify an uncountable? Money is uncountable. What? What did you say? Heard someone said something, but I'm not sure. Well, so I'm expecting for you to for you to remember that information because today we're having uh, this is the activity that we're going to have for today before we start today's class. As you can see there, uh, that's an exercise about countable and uncountable. So what are we going to do? We are going to have uh, five minutes the most to complete this part. What I want you to do is to try to, uh, to work on the chat, for example, like number one, countable, number two, one, countable, or something like that. I don't know. So first, I want you to do the first part. We are not going to work on teams. We are going to work individually, okay? So what I want you to do is to try to um, write the right answers on the chat that we have here in the call, not the WhatsApp group, okay? The chat that we have on the call. So we have uh, five minutes for doing the first part in which I mean, you can only read the instructions and you can start doing that. So it's not that difficult. So let's let's go. Did you, I mean, let me ask you, did you understand what I said? Yes, was it understandable? In Spanish teacher, <laughs> sorry. Usted quiere que um, clasificamos los contables y los incontables? Y en la parte B, este, coloquemos el contable e incontable que es mejor para la oración. Right? No, really. No. No. <laughs> I'm no. And the, I mean, what I want you to do is in the first part, I want you to write, I mean, las instrucciones ahí dicen, write whether these are countable or uncountable, ¿sí? Solo van a escribir a la par countable and uncountable. Sí, pero en este caso no lo vamos a hacer ni en cuaderno ni en nada. Necesito que me escriban sus respuestas en el chat, todas. Es decir, number one, solo pone la palabra countable or non-countable. So I don't know. You tell me. So we're going to have five minutes, cinco minutos, the most. En el chat de aquí de, 
the, the, from, the from, the, from the call, ¿sí? Tratemos, no sé si se puede la verdad de hacer, bueno, yo creo que solo le dan enter y automáticamente se envía el mensaje sin esperar que, que vayan haciendo una lista. So I really don't know. Sí, teacher, al darle enter automáticamente se envía el mensaje. Yeah, I understand. So it's going to be a little bit complicated because everyone is going to start clicking and clicking and clicking. It's not going to be in order. Teacher, si lo pone como, coma. Como, la, como coma o le da este, en el chat la, la tecla como de enter, se va bajando hacia, según lo que usted está escribiendo, y yéndose al, al inicio. Yeah, it's not, it's not like a paragraph. We cannot do that. I mean, I can see who he, uh, who is participating. I can clearly see. Um, just got some answers from Melvin, from Eliud, from Mayra, from William. Ana Mayora, I see. William. Be sure. Yes. Sugerencia. <laughs> Una sugerencia. A suggestion, okay. Ajá, yo pienso que me, podríamos decir las opciones que son contables, 1, 4, 3, 5, así, y poner la sola respuesta y luego las in, incontables. Mm, uh, I, didn't, I didn't quite understand what you were trying to say. No, no entendí muy claro. What's, what's, what was that? Si digamos la primera, la tercera y la cuatro son incontables, poner 1, 4, 3, 4, Incontable de respuesta en vez de estar una por una. Yeah, that, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Tiene más sentido. Yeah, but I can see. Uh, wow, okay. So, I think ahí, uh, Andrea. Andrea, yeah, Andrea, she sent me the list. Ella me acaba de enviar la lista completa. So, I don't know. So, it's, I think, is. Yo creo que it's the use of the technology, you know? We don't know how to use too much technology. Probably that's that's right. chat privado, teacher, or chat del grupo. Uh, well, and, and the group chat. I, I mean, it's, okay. up to, it's up to you, actually. Okay. Okay, yeah, but I can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now you're doing that, but later on, I'm going to ask you, like, Why do you think those are countable or non countable? So it's not like that you are just going to do that. No, I'm going to ask you later on. That was very organized, Elba. I can see that. I mean, very, very organized. I can see that arriving sent me a list too. So that's probably he did it on some somewhere else and then he just copy and pasted. it. That's probably, it was easier. And I'm using my cell phone teacher. Oh, you did it on your cell phone? Yes, I'm using my cell phone. But I mean, did, did you go to like to messages or did you did it like in the chat? All no, I did it on the chat. Uh, just uh, wrote the first words, then I click on space and he did everything. He did everything. Okay. All right. So probably it's just a matter of understanding how to use the phone. Maritza, okay, I can see the list. Hi, teacher. I yes. have a problem What's, with what's my, it? In my chat. Mm -hmm. uh, topé la, la, las, el, el número de, 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 de palabras y ya se me trabó. Really? So just you can just send what you have. Just click what you have and then keep on doing the other ones later on. Okay. Okay, I can see that the majority of you are sending your answers. I can see that, okay. All right, some of you were able to do the list. Some, some others were not able to do that. 
it might be a problem or something related with phones or computers. I really don't know because some of you are probably connected through computers and some others are connected through um, through a cell phone. So it's it's probably what's what's happening. So let's see. All right, I keep receiving some more. Now, I think that we had enough time already. The majority of you already did that. So we're not going to take that much in doing that. Now, I'm going to ask some of you, I'm gonna take some of your answers here. And for example, Alberto, Alberto Enrique, are you there? Well, yes. All right, so what do you think number one is? Contable or uncountable? Why do you think that? Why do you think that is uncountable? Porque la leche no se puede contar. Can we? What if I say two glasses of milk? That be possible if I say two glasses of the glasses, yes, teacher, but the milk is uncountable. All right. Yes. That's, mm -hmm, okay. Yes. That's what I wanted you to know. Like, even though if I say two glasses, we don't have to get confused in that because glasses, of course, are going to be countable, but milk will still be uncountable. So, Iris, Regina, what about number two? Uh, countable, teacher. Countable. Okay, what yeah. about butter, Katya? It's uncountable, teacher. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what, what do you think about number five? Oh, my God. What do you think about number five? No, number four, actually. Song. Is countable? Yeah, it is countable. Uh, the next one is pretty obvious, right? When I say music, that's uncountable. So what about number six, Cecilia? What do you think about number six? Number six is uncountable. Uncountable. Why do you think that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um... It's it's countable. And if it is countable, why do you say so? Because um, actually, mm -hmm. count down the numbers and minutes and are numbers. We can count minutes. Okay, makes sense. Uh, <laughs> when we say butter, that's mantequilla. Okay. Now, uh, Carlos Regalado, what do you think about number seven? Uncountable. Uncountable. What about number eight, Mar Maritza? What about number eight? I think that you're talking, but we cannot listen to what you're saying. No, we do not listen to you. That might be a problem with your mind. Yes. Um, uh, to say that yesterday that, uh, that the can be words, um, can be singular or plural, but mm -hmm. child is a word, uh, it's not plural. No, that's singular. It is singular, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's, it's, in, it's uncountable. Why do you think that? Uh, because, um, um, how can I say it in English? Because I think it's a word that no not specifying, no lleva ni siquiera la preposición a, ah, entonces no podemos decir si es singular o plural. Uh, but yes, actually, actually we can. Child is singular. Yes. 
I'm sorry. But what? children is countable. Countable, countable teacher. teacher. Yeah, it, it's actually countable because I mean, when you say child, that's I just one, child. one, just I one. Child. But when you say mm -hmm. children, that's uh -huh. more. So remember that one of the characteristics of countable nouns is that they have singular and plural. Mm -hmm. We cannot say that the child is uncountable because it has a plural form, even though the plural form is completely different than the one that we have in singular. So we cannot say that that is uncountable. Okay, I confused that with the word children. So, <laughs> okay. Children. No. Uh -huh. Estaba confundida porque me lo imaginaba que era con, con la otra palabra. Uh Okay, okay, that, that might be an issue. Thank you. So, Mayra, what do you think about number nine? Mm. Countable. Countable, okay. Now, I think that we're pretty clear about it, so we're not going to focus any more on that. Today, guys, is going to be a little bit more related to vocabulary. Today, we're going to see like a very long list of adjectives which are going to be, most of them are going to be for uh, of appearance. So when we say that, of course, we refer to, you know, physical descriptions or something that we want to say about someone. So we're going to try to verify some of the, uh, some of the adjectives that we use when we want to describe someone or when we want to use those to talk about appearance in physical descriptions. So let me just go ahead and try to share the screen with you so you can have an idea what I'm talking about. So as you can see here, it says adjectives of appearance. So that's what we're going to see today. Today, we're going to have more uh, about also pronunciation because some of them are going to be probably new for you or some others are going to be very common because when we say adjectives of appearance, of course, there's a very big list of those. So we're going to understand them all or to try to verify each one of them. So just let me double click here. Okay. And here we have a brief information about what adjectives of appearance are and what is, of course, a simple adjective. So I would like to, um, to know if someone would like to help me reading what are adjectives of appearance? Me, teacher Katia. Katia, go ahead, please. Okay. Appearance is defini defini defined as the way so define. Appearance is defined as the way someone or something looks. This adjective describes the way a person, place, or thing looks. They answer the question, what kind, what kind of? What kind of, okay. Oh. So basically, as I said at the beginning, those are adjectives that we are going to use when we want to describe or when we want to say something about a person, our place, or uh, things or, you know, styles when we want to talk about someone else or a person or thing, appearances. So now it's very important that first of all, we know what an adjective is. Of course, in simple words, what I can say is that an adjective is something that describes, but I would like someone to help me just to read this part. What's an adjective? Who would like to help me doing that? Ceci. Ceci, go ahead, Ceci. Uh, what's an adjective? Adjectives describe the way something or someone looks. They can describe a person, place, or thing, and like adjectives or quality. Oh, qualities. Okay. Now, uh, this is just for you to know. Like, I mean, adjectives, there's also a variety in adjectives of appearance are of course like some, some other uh, variety of the main thing, which are the adjectives. 
So as I said at the beginning, today is going to be more a little bit of vocabulary because we have a lot of adjectives. Of course, you're not going to be able probably to memorize them all, but at least you can understand or you will have an idea time when you see any of those in any book or any website or any other place. All right, so here we start with this information. So uh, I will request that every one of you helps me reading that. So everyone is going to uh, participate today. So we are going to start with the first one, which is this one right here. And I will need Anna Noemi to help me with the first one. So go ahead, Anna. Okay, teacher, attractive. A, pe a person who is good looking, male or female. Male or female. Okay, when we say attractive, Obviously, is that we're talking about good looking about someone. Attractive, all right? We said attractive. Now, Katya, go ahead, Katya, and help me with number two, this one. Okay, teacher. Youthful. Looks. A person who looks young or much younger than their actual age. Okay, when we say that just full, is that when someone is not all, but I mean, it, it's it's like someone looks young or younger than the actual age. So that's when we're going to use just full, okay? So I hope you're trying, you're understanding. If at any point you feel that you're not understanding what we're talking about, please ask so we can try to explain you, okay? Ceci, go ahead and help me with the next one. A person who has no hair, some bad people shape their heads. Okay, bald, when we say bald, a person who has no hair. So when we listen to that, we automatically understand what we're talking about, right? So what's, how would you translate bald? Una calva, yes, that's right. So let's move on with the next one. And I need Mayra with the next word. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. A person who is extremely good <clears throat> looking, mainly used to describe women. To describe women. Women, okay? Describe women. Time, this word, we are going to use it for describing a woman or women in this case, but sometimes there's some occasions or some context in which we can also use beautiful to describe an appearance of a man. But we have to understand the most of the time we are going to use beautiful and for men, we are going to use the word handsome, which is pretty much the same thing. So, Silvia de Ramos, go ahead and help me with the next one. Teacher. Yes. One question. La diferencia beautiful and gorgeous. 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 Sí. Gorgeous. Okay, when we say gorgeous, I mean, they, it's, it's not actually a difference. When we say beautiful and gorgeous, those are synonyms, son sinónimos. So when we say that, it means that both of them means the same thing. But when we when we use it in a different context or when we use like, for example, if I say, uh, you're so beautiful, it's like I'm talking about the general appearance of, of someone. But if, if I say, oh, wow, that, that uh, dress look gorgeous on you. It's because I'm kind of talking specifically about something that someone is has put on. I don't know if you get me the idea. And could? Could, what's, what's can you spell that? Quit, quit, Sarah, Mayra, K-U-E-T, quit. K U E T. Good. Can you spell it, Maida? Because I, I really didn't understand what you said. Cuando dice cut, no sé cómo se pronuncia. 
that's that's why I'm telling you to spell it. Can you spell the word? T U T es como como cuando dice que una pintura o algo es good, dice como bonito. No sé cuál es la diferencia. Oh, cute, 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 cute you mean? Ah, como lindo. No es que como no sé cómo lindo. Oh, okay, cute. When you say cute, we, we refer to oh, that's cute. It's like lindo. That's what we. That's what we're trying to say. Oh, that's okay. cute. Okay, cute. Yes, that's lindo. Okay, now uh, let's move on. Carlos Regalado, help me with this one here. Okay. Blah. 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 Mm -hmm. A person who has yellow, yellow hair. Okay, a person who has yellow hair, we call it blonde, or sometimes in the language of the streets, we can say blondie, but not, it's better if you say blonde, not blonde, because that's kind of being respectful, or respectful, something like that. So it's better to say blonde. All right, so let me see. Um, Vidal, go ahead and help me with the next one. Subi. Mm -hmm. A polite way, I was describing someone who is a bit overweight. Overweight, okay. So when we say this word, es como una forma educada, como dice ahí, de decirle a alguien, en vez de ser despectivo y de decirle a alguien gordo, le decimos gordito, right? Just a matter of... Rellenito, teacher. Or rellenito, something like that. So in English, we say chubby, chubby. That's the way we say it. So they would say chubby. It's like a polite way of saying uh, or to try to describe someone who is a little bit of overweight, okay? So we have to try. I have a question. What's your question? Chubby is not a word too much offensive. It's very normal in the English. Oh yeah, it's language. very normal. I mean, I mean, you can uh, uh, offense is if you said como despectivo, no sé, fat. If you fat. si tú le dices a alguien, oh, you're so fat. Fat. Oh, okay. Es si ofensivo. Why? Oh, okay. you mean directly, you're saying gordo o gorda to someone. Oh, okay. so that's very okay. offensive. But if you say chubby, it is como más eh, cariñoso. Eh, a little bit of that es como una forma más educada de decir oh está rellenito o está gordito verdad pero oh. sí the word exactly okay, okay. so we say chubby all right so we don't have the word here the, we don't have the I mean the the explanation here but curvy curvy is only used for women why because when we refer to the body of a woman, we can say, oh, she's curvy. I think you have an idea what I'm talking about, see? ¿sí? Pienso que tienen la idea de lo que me refiero, right? Yes, teacher. Como que dice que cuero. Curvilínea. Yeah, curvilínea. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're talking about, curvy. All right, so, Eribe, now that I... 90, 60, 90. <laughs> yeah. I heard that you that you that you talk there, so please help me with the next one. Ordinary, somebody who's very plain or average looking, not not especially beautiful. Okay, it's like we already know that it's someone who doesn't have that much. It's like you know, it's something very average. It's like there's not that much. Alguien ordinary, right? Ordinary, it's the ordinary. Now let's go with the next one, Nidia. I will need your help on that one. Plain is uh, some, somebody who is very ordinary looking, a person with a very look, a very, average. 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 Average, average, average looks. looks. What does it mean? It's someone Alguien que no le gusta arreglarse mucho, que se pone lo que tiene, lo que sale. Eh, eh, no tan especial la cosa, le decimos a alguien, alguien que 
plano, alguien así en el sentido de que... Así como simple. Simple, ya, yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, solo va viviendo y ya sale como sea, sin importar lo que digan los demás. Teacher, what I mean, average? O, o average, death? promedio, average, okay. promedio. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, now let's move on with the next one, Iris. Presentable. Present, presentable. We say presentable. Presentable. Mm -hmm. Smart, clean, and well dressed. 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 So we say smart, someone who is smart, clean, and well dressed. We call the presentable. Presentable. So when you go to, you know, any meeting, a partir de ahora, ¿verdad? Estas palabras se nos tienen que ir quedando. Si usted va a una reunión, oh, wow, you're looking so presentable today. Te ves muy presentable hoy, right? So we try to, the reason why we, we teach you these adjectives is because we want you to use them in your daily basis and probably not in your daily basis because when you go to work or something like that, of course, probably nobody else is going to speak English. But at least you will have an idea of what or, or a context in which you can use them. Okay. So uh, let me see. William, the next one. Redhead. Redhead, a person with orange hair. This one is not that commonly used in, in the English language. Because when you said redhead, cabeza roja, it's like a little bit offensive. So, but still, but still, some people use it to describe when someone has an orange hair. So we do not use it that much. So we normally say, or in English, they usually say, oh, a person with orange hair. But we don't call them redhead because that's a little bit of offensive. Okay, but still, it's necessary that you know it. So let's go with the with the next one, Maritza. Scrappy. Mm -hmm. Just to describe someone whose appearance is very on untidy. On untidy. Untidy. What's scruffy? Scruffy, it's a person, una persona desaliñada o desordenada, scruffy. That's, a, 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 that's what we say, or that's where we are going to use scruffy. Now, let's move on to the next one. Remember, guys, if you're having any type of questions, ask the questions, okay? Gabriele Unice, help me with the next one. Shepherdy. Used to describe curved woman with a small waist, waist, algo así. Waist. Waist. Thank you. So when we say shapely, shapely, we refer to describe a curvy woman. So uh, the the meaning of that is going to be um, something like proporcionado, uh, a person who is well proportionized. Una persona proporcionada eh, en nuestro español caliche que tenemos sería como, uh, I don't know how to say that. Uh, what I'd like. Uh, well, it's like proporcionada. It's the only way without, that okay, I... Eh, me imagino que, perdón, que es algo así como que no tiene, que, así, que tiene su cuerpo así como que no es... Sí. No es gordito, o sea, que tienes tú como proporcionado Cintura. su cuerpo directamente. Exacto. Yeah, that's, that's what we mean. That's what I was trying to say. Una persona que tiene todo su cuerpo bien proporcionado. Generally, generalmente, esta palabra es utilizada solo para mujeres. Generalmente, aunque hay contextos en los que también se utiliza para hombres. But most of the time is proporcionado, like shapely. Okay. So now let's move on to the next one. Elude. Sure. Used to describe someone who isn't very tall. Can you say that again? Sure. 
Okay, it's not chore, because if you say chore, chore, that's different thing. So it's chore with a sh like that. So chore. Sure. Okay, short. So uh, that's pretty obvious. Every one of us know what short is, so we're not going to focus on that very much. Ya todos sabemos que significa short. So let's move on. Now we have a, uh, more adjectives here, and I will need Ingrid Jamilet helps in this one. So let's go ahead. Ingrid Jamilet, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay. Attractive. A person. Oh. No, what, what are you saying? Es que se me acaba de mover la, no sé. Ah, okay. Vamos. We just moved, yeah. Okay, entonces estamos en fat. Yes, we are there. Okay. A very negative way to describe someone who is overweight. Very rude and a bit insulting. That's what I was saying before. Eso es lo que les estaba diciendo algunos anteriormente. This is a very negative way of describing someone. Very rude and very insulting. But still, it's necessary for you to know. Like, uh, that's the real thing. So we can use... In, in order not to sound that rude or not to sound that insulting to someone, you can use some other adjectives which are going to be the same thing, but they are not going to sound that rude to someone else when you're talking in English. Okay, so let's move on to Elmer. Oh, Teacher, Elmer. I, ha I have a question. Yes. That word can be used as a, sub uh, as a subject, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, sure, yes. For, for example, when we refer to uh, like, like food, when we refer to that or some, some, you know, like when you eat a chip, there's some- Junk food. food for junk example. food, yeah, yeah, junk food. That's pretty much it, yes. Basically on that one. Mm -hmm. and that's Thank you. Where we can use it, okay. Thank you for bringing that up. So- Fit. Um, Yes. I did. Uh, fit. Mm -hmm. One, someone who gets a lot of exercise and is very healthy. Healthy. Healthy, healthy. And two, a very attractive person. Attractive. Okay. So the adjective fit, we can use it in two occasions or in two different things. The first one is pretty obvious, right? We already know that when we use, when we say, oh, that person is very fit, we automatically understand that when we're saying that is because we're talking about someone who goes to the gym every single day or someone who exercises every single day. So that's going to be number one. When we refer to someone who is, or who exercises a lot, but when, when someone is also as active, we can say, oh, wow, you're very fit. Or we can say, that, that dress fits you perfectly. So we're trying to say that when you're, oh my God, what was that? I heard, I heard a, weird, a weird noise some, somewhere, somewhere there. Okay. Someone is eating, teacher. Yeah, I heard that. Someone is probably... Teacher, una idea. Eh, podría ser de que en el caso número uno eh, puede ser de esas personas que hacen ejercicio, son saludables, pero solamente se refiere más que todo al, al cuerpo y, y en cambio en la dos es que una persona sí realmente como bonita y atractiva, ¿verdad? Quizás el fit es como más de salud, de de sanidad, de que es una persona saludable porque puede ser que no tenga, que no sea, digamos, en el caso de los hombres, Hamson o Freddy, en el caso de los women, algo así musculoso, podría ser la diferencia. ¿sí? Ajá, musculoso, digamos. Yes, uh, uh, but creo que ese es, es oh. de, de nuestra cultura, el pensar que okay. somos fit, referirnos a alguien automáticamente mm -hmm. con músculos. No, that's oh. not 
Eso no es, significa la palabra fit. Cuando decimos fit, es no, que no, necesa, exactly, no necesariamente vas a estar muy poderoso, pero estás en forma. Why? Okay. Est estás con tu salud. Uh -huh. okay. Teacher, but, yes. when you say, but when you say that dress fits you, in this case, is used as a verb or it is a, an adjective? No, and, and that when, when we say that dress fits you, uh, it's como depende no te la verdad. Uh, respira. But in this case, fit is is a verb or or it, it or it is uh, an adjective. No, I love you way you I. Oh my! Um, can you please try to turn your microphones off? We're listening to. Like a lot of sounds in the background, so I I can like kind of concentrate with what he's asking me right now. Okay, thank you very much. Now, when I said uh, that dress fits you, in that case, is not used as as an as an adjective. It's used as as a verb because we're talking specifically about the dress. So, um, with there's some other context in which you can use a non necessarily, I mean, in, you know, grammar is, is complex and I will, I will need to, you know, to go one by one to kind of explain you where it goes and why we change it to that. And when we say something like it to you, sometimes according to some other words, it can be um, an adjective. But most of the time when we put it in that position, we already know that that's a verb. And I completely understand what you're saying. Uh, but in the example, I said that dress fits you. Yes, that's the or there is used as a verb. Uh, I don't know if I... Thank you, teacher. Okay. I know grammar, it might be a little bit complex. That's, that's a lot to process. So um, let me see. I will need Andrea Maria. Andrea Maria, let's go with the next one. Flabby. Uh, used to describe someone who does not get much exercise with poor muscle tone. With poor muscle tone. Okay. Uh, when we use that, is the opposite, as you can see. Used so to describe someone who uh, oh does. No. Um, so I don't know who is talking, but there's someone there that is talking and we can listen to everything you're saying. So please be careful with your microphone, okay? All right, so this adjective flabby is the opposite of fit. So can we say flabby is someone with poor muscle tone, flacido. All right, that's what we're referring to, flabby. All right, so. Aguadito, teacher. I'm sorry, what? Aguadito. Yeah, and in other words, it will be like that. Yeah, in other words, it will be like that. But uh, in English, we say flabby. So it's going to be like flacido. So the same thing. Elba, help me with the next one, please. Well, a practice used to describe men and women. This is the word that I guess Mayra was asking about, gorgeous. Gorgeous is a word that we are going to use when we want to describe a man or a woman appearance and we want to say that is very attractive or something like that, okay? What about handsome? Handsome is always going to use for a man who is extremely good looking. For example, uh, if you're dressing someone one day specifically and you look but very, very, in this case, very handsome in what you're dressing, you know, something new or a new, a new shirt or something like that, you're good looking that day. It's not like that you're good looking every single day, but probably specifically that day, 
you were looking good. So, so someone told you, wow, you look handsome today. Something like that. I don't know if you get the idea of what I'm saying. Teacher, eh, eso puede ser en el caso del hombre como dijeran, ah, que apuesto te des ahora, o es otra palabra. No, 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 yes, that's, that's what, uh -huh. yeah. Es Solamente como, para, el, para el masculino, ¿verdad? Solo masculino, exacto, sí. Uh -huh. Lo que decía es que no necesariamente puede que seas atractivo físico. O oh, como dice, te ve bien guapo o algo así. Yes, es como okay. que no seas atractivo físicamente, pero... Es, pero luzca bien la ropa. Ese día te pusiste algo, una camisa nueva, un nuevo, que eh, no sé, de repente te arreglaste un poco más y alguien te vio y te dijo, ok, te ves guapo, específicamente ese día, más no significa que todos los días sea así. Es just... Just an adjective to describe the moment. Para describir el momento. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, let's see. Daisy. Daisy Sarai, help me with the next. Okay. It's kind. Skinny. 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 You say to describe some who is very thin. Impolite. Impolite. So, when we, when we say that, Es que le, le digamos a alguien delgado, así como seco, skinny. So, as it says, es una forma muy, no es educada, para decirle a alguien, oh, so seco, you're very skinny. No, en vez de decirle seco, le utilizamos otra palabra y podemos utilizar esta que es neutra, slender. Slender is used to describe a person who looks healthy, a thin person who looks healthy. So, es como, es delgado, pero no le vamos a decir te ve seco. Entonces, Teacher. de forma educada, oh, you, you're slender. Entonces, el, el término skinny jeans es como que bien así, como que muy, muy fuerte decirlo, ¿verdad? Como mm. jeans para secos o algo así. Yeah, it's like para delgado. Ya se sabe automáticamente. Para seco. Jeans es para súper sequito. That, that's okay. it. Same. Okay. All right, so remember that if you don't want to sound impolite, si no quiere sonar mal educado, usted puede decir, oh, you're slender. Or you look, you look very slender. Es como que el neutro, usted le está diciendo que sí está seco, ¿verdad? Pero no se le está diciendo específicamente. It's like slender, como... Como que no se le está diciendo así de forma despectiva. ¿verdad? Despectiva, exactly. So now we go with the next one uh, and I will need, let me see. I have two sisters here, but I don't remember who is in, who is the other one. Emily, I guess. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes, okay, Emily. Smart used to describe someone who takes a lot of care over their appearance. Over their appearance. So smart, it can be used in two different contexts. Smart, smart puede ser utilizado de dos formas. Cuando lo tomamos de adjective of appearance, podemos decir que es una persona que se cuida mucho. Like, take a lot of care, que se ve como me queda la camisa, si me queda bien, que si de repente está arrugada, que no me la pongo. Like that, smart. Pero también si lo usamos en un sentido como adjetivo general para describir no apariencia, sino... Eh, en este caso inteligencia podemos decir smart que es alguien inteligente so that's the difference si lo utilizamos como adjective of appearance es alguien que se cuida mucho de cómo luce if we use it in, in, in the context of a normal adjective un adjetivo normal vamos a decir que es una persona inteligente ok do we understand the difference? ¿Sí entendemos la diferencia? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes, teacher. now Thank you. Uh, let, let's go with the with the next one, and I will need Valentin's Valentin Montesino. Hi, teacher. Hello. Can you help me with the next one? Okay, it's talking. Ah, stocky, stocky, sin pronunciar la E. Exactly, that's Use what I was going to say, but thank you. 
you see to describe people, especially men who are broad and not very tall. Not very tall. Okay. Uh, tall, very tall. Thank you, teacher. Very tall. So when we say stocky, esta la vamos a utilizar casi siempre para hombres because cuando alguien, usted le dice a alguien, está bien fornido, está bien cholo, fornido. So we say, oh, you're very stocky. So alguien que no está muy alto, puede ser alguien pequeño, pero está fornido in our language, in nuestro idioma, like Spanish, okay? So tall, as we have there, is someone, or we use that adjective to describe someone who is above average height. So that's very simple, so we already understand that. Tattoo, someone who has a lot of tattoos. So we are not going to focus on that one. Is that very easy for you to understand? Now, guys, with all those uh, adjectives that we just saw, alguien tiene una pregunta so far? No? No, teacher. Okay, ¿qué pasaría si mañana hacemos un examen de estos adjetivos? Are we ready for that? Vamos a estudiar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ya le foto. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go, guys, to this activity really quick. So I need you to take a screenshot or a picture of this. So we're going to, this is not complicated. So that's why this is the only one that we're going to do right now. So it's just a matter for you to verify the appearances of each person and just to put the right name under each or right next to each number. Okay, so I think that you're ready. Si estamos listos ya? Yes, teacher. Great. So let's the screen. Hey, teacher, can you take the picture again? Mm. One moment, please. Okay, here we have. Thank you, teacher. All right, so now let's move on. Please, de nuevo se los pido. English. Siempre hay unos por ahí, ¿verdad? Que les tengo que estar diciendo English. Because you love Spanish. So let's go. He has got classes. This uh, he's wearing a street t-shirt. Aha, uh -huh, Lucas. Lucas or Oliver? Lucas. Oh yes, Oliver. Oliver. So, 
Oliver. Okay, number three. This has got long, straight, long hair. Hey. She is wearing a flower dress. Oh, it's Sarah. Sarah. Dress and yes, Sarah. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Sarah. Number four. Number four. Has good cool. Or Helen. Or Helen. Is it the ghost? Yes, it's Helen. It's Helen. Helen. Okay. Helen. Right. Well, the four five. is Helen. Yes. The five is Hel Helen. I, I, A, brother. Yeah. Okay. 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 The star hunting, she is wearing a dark blue cap and, and, and orange jacket. Okay. Is it um, is, is James. James. James, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, um, has got dark skin. Um, wavy dark hair. She's wearing a purple top. She's Helen. Helen. Yes, Helen. Helen. Okay, guys, so I think that this exercise was really easy, it was not that complicated. It's just, it was just to find the right name and to put it next to each one of the numbers. So let me see. Um, let's check people here. Okay, William. Will yes, teacher. Can you please help me in number two? Uh, Oliver. Oliver. It's Oliver. Yeah, it is Oliver because it says wearing striped t-shirt. Okay. What about number three? Uh, it is Regina. Three. Sorry. Uh, has got long stripe brown hair. She is wearing a flower dress and brown shoes. Mm -hmm. Is Sarah? Sarah, okay, thank you very much. And then the last one is going to be for Melvin. Melvin Jose, number four. Melvin Jose. Uh, well, I think that we, we can now listen to you because you're probably having problems with your connection. But thank you very much. So, Elmer, Elmer, help me with number four. Number four has got curly dark hair. He is wearing jeans and red trainer. Is Brian. Brian. And the last one, Elude, number five. Has got gray hair and green hair. He is, is wearing a green cardigan and brown trunks. He is Peter. Peter, okay. 
That's it. So that's going to be all for today, guys. Uh, well, thank you so much for attending to us. Remember that we are going to have calibration on Thursday. It's not going to be on Friday. This week, we will have calibration on Thursday. So please try to work tomorrow on the platform. If you haven't finished the exercises, try to do it tomorrow because you have tomorrow and Thursday. Okay. So if there's no other question, that's going to be all for today. Thank you so much for coming to the class and see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good, good night, night, teacher. I see you. Good night, teacher.